There's one thing with software development that I wish I knew earlier, and that's the importance of good app architecture. Unfortunately, it was one of those things that I had to learn through making mistakes with different projects. So hopefully this video will help you guys skip some of those mistakes or at least fast forward through them. But thanks for joining in guys. Today we're gonna to take a little adventure. I'm back at home in Orlando. So me and some friends are gonna take a day trip to Tampa. But that's not all we're gonna do of course. We're gonna talk about, you know, the things I learned about architecture and just share some of the changes that I've made in my latest project. So as some of you know, I'm a mobile developer who specializes in Flutter right now. So I'm making a new travel app using Flutter. And coming from the world of JavaScript, which is like the wild, wild west when it comes to type safety, I've also found architecture just challenging to learn. I've never been the best with object-oriented principles, even back in school. So I definitely don't love it. But I'm trying to get better at it now. In my journey, I've put a lot of effort into really nailing down the presentation layer of my apps. I've settled on using Block with Flutter for the state management, and it's been a game changer for me. I love it so far. But as the app grew, so did the complexity of my data layer, and that's kind of my problem right now. It started off really clean, but now it's turned into a spaghetti code nightmare. And it's actually reached a point where even minor changes are starting to scare me. I'm afraid I'm going to break something by adding a feature or fixing a bug. So I've decided it's time to re-architecture this thing. And I'm leaning towards learning clean architecture to do that. Learning architecture for an app sounds complicated, and it could be. But there's a fun and easy way to learn a lot of other topics in tech. And that takes us to our sponsor for today, Brilliant. Brilliant is the best way to learn math, data science, and computer science interactively. It has thousands of lessons from basics to advanced topics, and new lessons are added every month. Not sure where to start in the programming journey? The new Thinking in Code course gets you designing simple programs that helps you solve actual real-world problems right away. For example, like doing navigation with maps or writing programs that automatically respond to work messages. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash James Harrison. The first 200 of you will get 20% off of Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Try it out. Now back to clean architecture. So unlike my previous approaches, clean architecture offers a structured way to organize code. It makes it easier to scale, maintain, and even test. To grasp this concept though, I'm actually going to take a different approach. Usually I would try to read or find some YouTube videos or use something like Brilliant. See that? Throw that plug in there again. But this time, I'm going to try using GPT as my mentor. One way that I actually use AI for learning with programming is just actually just like that, just like a mentor. I just chat with it about all the questions that I have. So it's easier this way because I can just ask it to explain a concept to me and ask as many dumb questions as I want without judgment or without feeling like I'm bothering someone. So I've grown to really like AI to learn like that. I don't think it's the best at programming, but it's pretty good at explaining concepts. And it definitely helped me understand clean architecture, mainly because I could spam it with a bunch of questions. So I'm going to try to explain this in my own words. So if it's not exactly right, don't judge me, don't hate me. This is how I understand it. Um, maybe it'll help you, maybe it won't. But what clean architecture does is it, it really breaks up the app into a, a ton of layers and a ton of files, which that part kind of sucks. It's a lot of files. But it, it breaks it up so that you really have separation of concerns. Each layer does its own thing, and that allows you to be able to swap out layers without worrying about breaking anything in the layer in a different layer for example you could change your entire database that you're using for storage and your front-end code wouldn't have to change at all your, your UI code like the presentation layer wouldn't have to change at all because it doesn't know about what specific database you're using that all lives in 
that data source layer. Okay, so what do I mean by layers? Okay, so here's a feature. So I do the feature architecture where I break it up by feature. So this new feature I'm building is a map. So how did I break it up? We have our data layer, our domain layer, and then our presentation layer. This is what I mean when it's a lot of files, but it makes sense. So in here you have a data model, and this will match the layout of what comes from the database. So this could know about the database. For example, it knows here that I'm using Firebase, right? And then that will be a little bit different than our domain entity, which is a similar model, but this is strictly what we're using on the UI. So there's, it doesn't know anything about our database or anything like that. So we'll start at the lowest level. We have an abstract class here, which will be our map data source. So data sources is one of the layers, right? And in the data source, it defines the methods that you'll have that interact with the database. So in this case, we get get all pins for a city, right? Notice there's no implementation here, right? These are just the definition of the methods. And that's what helps us make this code testable because now we have the implementation here where we're actually getting and returning the data from the database. Okay, so what's the point of this? Why split it up? Because now we can swap out the database and this doesn't have to change. We're only changing the implementation, right? So the next layer up is our repos. So we'll go here and again, following the same pattern, we have this abstract class for repos. Notice it doesn't return the map pin model, which is the data layer um, model. It returns the map pin, which is the domain entity, which what we use on the UI. So the repo is where we can handle things like transforming the data from the data layer returned value to the one we're going to use on the UI. So notice here we can just <coughs> we have the repo and we're passing in a map data source, right? And then all we're doing in this case is calling the map data source method. And this is where it becomes useful. Cuz notice this doesn't know about anything about what type of database it is or anything like that. All it knows is hey, call this method from a class of this type. That's it. And that's where we can swap it out because we're calling this method get all pins for a city. It's going to come in here and do its thing, but it doesn't know or care about any of this stuff. So we could swap this out for a different database if we wanted to. Okay. And then the last layer would be what's called use cases. Use cases, the way I think about this is it's kind of like the features of the app or like the actions that a user takes. You know, for example, get all pins is a use case. Maybe login is a use case. Sign up, um, you know, uh, depend whatever the features of your app are, right? For me, it could be search. You know, it could be follow a friend. It could be unfollow. Now, these use cases are what we'll call from our block. In this case, I'm using block architecture, but yeah. So you see, notice again here, it's just abstracting everything out. So the front end, the presentation layer only knows about the use case. And then the use case is what we'll call the repo. And then the repo is what we'll call the data source. So everything is broken up. And there you have it. I hope that helps. I don't really know if that was a good explanation or not. So my bad. But I kind of understand it now. And as much as it's a lot of files, it really makes all the files small and maintainable which I really like like it's just it sucks because it is a lot of files though so I don't know let me know your guys thoughts in the comments about what you how you architect your app or what you think of clean um, also let me know if you want me to do a video on how I use GPT in programming and as a software engineer because I feel like a lot of people use it wrong and yeah so let me know but we've been working for a while now, so now the rest of this, we're just gonna go explore Tampa a bit, maybe grab some drinks, some food, walk around, see what's up.